Josh Allen is 21 and five after a loss, which is the best record in the modern day Super Bowl era. And I heard this quote that resilience is not an absence of adversity, but the ability to face it, grow from it, and keep moving forward. And that is exactly what defines Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. When we get into adversity, if we get into moments during the season, we're able to adjust and not take back-to-back -back losses. Josh Allen is incredible, you know, to ignore the noise, ignore the fans, ignore all the bickering going on that, you know, this team has fallen off and all these things that you hear. Man, can't we remember and reflect back to the 17-year playoff drought? And I'm telling you, I think some fans, we, we've grown uh, to be a little bit spoiled. You know, I think our fan base it didn't live through the 17 years, are a little bit spoiled at the good times here. And I really believe, you know, it's it's hard to win every single game. Josh Allen showing that resilience, 21-5, and five, the best record of any quarterback in the Super Bowl era. I mean, you have to, have to let that sink in. I think that is absolutely, absolutely incredible here. Now, are the Buffalo Bills done making a move before the trade deadline? I still think Brandon Bean is still going to be trying to make a move. He's definitely going to be calling some teams here. And one thing I think that would definitely help the Buffalo Bills is a dynamic running back. You know, a lot of people want Hunter Renfro. They want Patrick Sertan. And I get it. Like, Patrick Sertan, absolute excellent corner. You know, opposite of Trey White next year. We know Trey White might not even start the season next year. So Patrick Sertan to fill in. But the thing is, we have Kyir Elam, right? We have Christian Benford. Dane Jackson is on a one-year deal. But we just have to keep those in mind. And I think Christian Benford actually had a very good game yesterday. I know stat-wise, it shows that he gave up a touchdown to Mike Evans. But Mike Evans pushed off him and got that touchdown. So, you know, I'm... I'm believing in Sean McDermott's ability and his eye for talent at the cornerback position. You know, I, I trust that Sean McDermott could easily find another starting cornerback in the NFL draft. You know, I, we got Trey White 27th overall, Kyrie Elam 24th overall, Taron Johnson in the third. You know, we found Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer in free agency. I mean, we turned them into the, the best dynamic safety duo in the NFL. You know, and I, I think that's huge. I think that's absolutely huge for the Bills here. Um, defensively, I think we, we shared things up. You know, we shared things up. Now, Tampa Bay, they are one of the worst teams running the football. But the Patriots were also one of the worst teams running the football, too. I think we definitely adjusted here. Eli Inku coming back is definitely going to help things out. But Puna Ford, Tim Settle, Jordan Phillips, I, I really didn't see them get blown off the ball really once. Uh, during that game versus the Buccaneers. So, yes, I think Josh Allen being 21-5 and five in the modern-day Super Bowl era after a loss is absolutely huge. But football is the ultimate team sport. I think credit needs to be given to Sean McDermott as well, given to each and every single player that's been here on the team alongside Josh Allen this entire time. And I give credit to the coaches, even Ken Dorsey and – you know, it's tough when, when you're feeling that pressure, you know, when when you're when you're feeling, you know, adversity, it, it it's tough to, to think clear headed, you know, and to uh, still produce on the field. And I think Josh Allen it really exemplifies that, that that resilience from Josh Allen is absolutely, absolutely remarkable. And also just seeing the fun that we had yesterday too, right? And Josh Allen even said it, like execution breeds fun, it breeds energy. But even on the good plays, you know, the plays that weren't touchdowns, we celebrated the little wins, you know? I saw players coming over to James Cook and petting him on the helmet, telling him good run, or Dalton Kincaid, you know, getting jumping in the crowd, hyping everyone up after the touchdown. You know, it's like those little things are absolutely huge. And you have to keep in mind, too, the Buffalo Bills so far in 2023 are defending the dirt. We're undefeated at home. And I, I think that really has a lot to do with the message of Sean McDermott. Our players really get up for these home games. And I, I really want to see the Bills still bring that energy to away games. I know teams don't necessarily celebrate as much at away games, but... 
you know, I, I think we got we to gotta stay hyped up during games. We got to keep the momentum on our side. When we start getting down on ourselves, right, and the team starts looking at one another for someone to make a play or, or, or something to happen, you know, and someone does make a play, celebrate it. Celebrate it without a doubt. But I, I really believe the Buffalo Bills would benefit from bringing in an additional piece here. And my real thought at this point uh, you know, some people wanting a tight end, you know, Damika Sue, a defensive tackle, Rob Gronkowski kind of sitting in the background. We have some free agents that are waiting to see who is definitely going to be making the playoffs. I don't think they're going to ultimately make a move until they know which teams are making the playoffs. So the question here is, you know, it takes two to tango. Will Brandon Bean find a trade partner? And one of which is Joe Shane of the New York Giants. Obviously, they have a relationship there. The, there could be thinking about parting ways with Saquon Barkley. And I think maybe a Kair Elam and some draft picks for Saquon Barkley could ultimately make sense to the Giants. Now, we see the Tennessee Titans trading away Kevin ba ba uh, Bernard. Uh, <laughs> but I believe he is proof that they're going to try to revamp things in, in Tennessee. So Derrick Henry, I think, is definitely on the Buffalo Bills' radar. He was actually at the Cleveland airport. So there is definitely some interest there. And the reason behind my thoughts of a running back is because of how teams have played the Buffalo Bills and what's currently trending in the NFL. This year, we've seen statistically offenses scoring the lowest amount of points and yards in recent years. And it is because the NFL's defenses have adopted the two high safety shells, something that Sean McDermott has always done here in Buffalo. You know, you force opposing offenses to call a high number of plays to march down the field, you know, and Brian Dable would always say it takes all 11 on offense and not necessarily the same on defense. It takes all 11 on offense to be successful. All it takes is one offensive lineman to not make their block and the play gets blown up. So knowing that teams are playing those two high safety shells, having a dynamic thicker running back such as Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, even James Conner could force teams to ultimately stack the box against the Buffalo Bills and throw the football and open things up to Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis on the outside. That one single high safety would have to cover both sides of the field versus having two that could split both ways. So I, I am really, really thinking that is definitely an option for the Buffalo Bills you know, Tampa Bay did stack the box a little bit. You know, James Cook is definitely a speed demon threat. Um, but, you know, he's not the biggest. He's not the biggest back. But I, I did see Tampa Bay start stacking the box a little bit against him, too. So we got to see what happens here. I appreciate you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that amazing win. Josh Allen, 21-5 and five after a loss. How sweet it is to be a part of this fan base. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe. Appreciate you, and go Bills.